Hello, witches, wizards, and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters. Welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all the food and drink featured inside. If you missed last week's recipe for our Hogwarts house crust cake, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. But it's Magic Monday, so let's see what recipe is up next. The end of term is nearing, but we still have time to squeeze in a few more recipes. So if you don't want to miss any of them, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, let's get to it. Okay, so our last recipe was at the end of the chapter. So we're gonna move on to chapter 14, Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. And as you can imagine, this is the one where Hagrid gets his dragon. And I love it, just at the start of the chapter, we have this beautiful illustration of all of the different types of dragon eggs. I kind of want one now as well, but let's see if there's gonna be some food to go along with it. Harry, Ron are in the library and they just bumped into Hagrid and he's told them to come around later. And you know, when we go to Hagrid's, there's always food. And on the next page, there it is. As soon as they walk into the hut, Hagrid made them tea and offered them stoked sandwiches, which they refused. Bit rude, but let's see if they wanna accept ours. For this recipe, we're going to make a sun-dried tomato and basil bread with 300 grams of strong bread flour, one teaspoon of salt, 10 grams of yeast, 250 milliliters of water, two tablespoons of olive oil, 75 grams of sun-dried tomatoes, and a bunch of basil leaves. We're also gonna make our own caramelized onions with one red onion, one tablespoon of oil, salt and pepper, one tablespoon of muscovado sugar, and half a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. To serve, you'll also need some rocket and stoat, but if you can't find any, corned beef or spam. Stoked sandwiches, eh? Call me psychic, but I probably know what's on your mind right now. What in the name of Dumbledore is stoat? Well, stoat is an animal, sort of like a weasel or a ferret, and long story short, very, very difficult to find in a supermarket or a butcher's, and too cute for me to include in this recipe. So we are gonna cut a little bit of a corner here, but we are gonna bring it back to the books. Now, a few of you eagle-eyed viewers may have remembered way back when when we were on the Hogwarts Express, we made Ron's sandwiches. Now I made these with red Leicester cheese because Ron is ginger. And then a few pages down, it does actually say that they're corned beef sandwiches because he doesn't like his mum to corned beef sandwiches. So we didn't really stick to the book then. So instead I thought we just make this a story arc and bring everything back together. So this recipe is gonna use corned beef because Actually, depending on where you get your corned beef or your spam from, it might not actually be beef. So, um, could be stoked. Let's get to it. First things first, we're gonna make our sun-dried tomato and basil bread from scratch. So for this, you want to add your flour into your bowl and then make a well in the middle. Add your salt and yeast on either side and then place your water and your oil in the middle. Knead this together for about five minutes until it's nice and smooth. While this is working in the machine, I'm gonna prepare our tomatoes and our basil. All you need to do is chop them up so they are nice and small in the bread. The easiest way to do this for the basil is to bunch them together, slice them through into nice strips, and then chop that through as well. And then for the tomatoes, they can be a bit more tricky, but just try your best to chop them down to size. Once you're happy with them, pop them into the dough and allow them to knead until it's evenly combined. Next, we need to leave this to rise for about an hour. So I'm gonna pop this into a well-greased bowl, cover it with cling film, and then place it in a warm, dry place until it's doubled in size. Okay, so now you're back from probably Googling what stoat is, just to make sure I'm not making it up. Let's talk about the bread in this episode. So I've gone for sun-dried tomatoes and basil, as it's gonna have such a punchy flavor, which means we can really focus on the bread and the filling, and don't have to worry too much about additional toppings. That said, we are gonna make our own caramelized onions, because that is gonna work really well with the different flavors in the bread. And again, for you eagle-eyed viewers, if you look at the different colors, we now have in our dish, we have 
red sun-dried tomatoes, green basil, our orangey bread, and our purpley red onions, which are our Hogwarts houses. There is method to the madness. Once the bread has finished rising, you want to take it out of the bowl and knock back the air. We're then gonna knead this for another two minutes and then roll it into a thick sausage. Grease a loaf tin and then place your dough inside. You want to cover this with cling film as well and then leave it to rise again for about 45 minutes. While this is rising, we're gonna move on to making our caramelized onions. And this is super, super simple to make. All you need to do is chop up your onions and I like to make them quite chunky so we see those nice pieces in our caramelized onions. Then take yourself a frying pan on a medium heat and add in your oil. Fry off the onions for about two to three minutes until they're nice and soft. You also want to season them with some salt and pepper. As your onions have just started to go golden brown, you then want to add in your sugar and your balsamic vinegar. Give this a good stir through and as your sugar begins to caramelize, it will blend in with those onions which continue to cook and release all of their flavors. After about another three to four minutes, it should be good to go. So you can pour this into a bowl and leave it until you're ready to serve. At this point, your bread should be ready to bake. So all you need to do is remove the cling film. You can add in some optional slits for an added effect and then pop it into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. So at this point, you should have the lovely smell of freshly baked bread filling your house. And it is to die for. Very, very hard to resist the temptation to eat a loaf of the bread as soon as it comes out of the oven, but we're gonna be patient and wait to make our corned beef sandwiches. I'd like to know down below in the comments, have you tried corned beef before and what do you think? It's actually tinned meat, but you don't need to cook it so you can eat it as it is. But I like to play around with the texture. So we are going to fry the corned beef to give it some heat. And then I'm going to use a blowtorch just to give it a bit of char on top because it's Hagrid. And even if you don't need to cook something, he's going to find a way to burn it. One of the best things about corned beef is that you need to unlock it with a key. So wind it round your tin of corned beef and release it onto your chopping board. We're then gonna slice this in half to get two chunky fillings. Place your frying pan on a high heat. I'm using the same one that we made our caramelized onions in just to keep all those flavors. We're gonna quickly fry the corned beef about a minute on each side, just so it starts to heat through and gets a slight crust on either side. Be careful as you remove it though, as sometimes it can crumble and break apart. Once your corned beef is ready, as I mentioned, I want to get a nice char on top. So you can either do this under the grill or if you have a blowtorch, use it to caramelize and crust the edges. The last step is to prepare our loaf of bread. So once it's out of the oven and cooled down slightly, you want to get a serrated knife and cut out some nice thick slices. To assemble, I've taken our sun-dried tomato and basil bread and given a nice spread of butter. On one side, I've added some pea shoots, or you can also use lettuce or any type of leaves. And on the other side, I've spread over our caramelized onions. Then you want to take your stoat or corned beef and place it on top of your leaves. Sandwich the other piece of bread on top, cut your sandwich in half, and it's good to go. Harry and the gang might have turned this one down, but we're definitely not going to. So there you go, stoat sandwiches, or in this case, corned beef sandwiches. But either way, Hagrid would be impressed. Let me know down below in the comments, have you tried corned beef before? And if not, would you give this recipe a go? That is all for this week's episode. But if you don't want to miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.